Last night's color correction did not go to plan, and I heavily debated even making this video because I know there's going to be people in the comments saying, I don't know what I'm doing, I ruined her hair, I destroyed her hair, and honestly, yeah, I'll, I'll take credit for some of that for sure. However, sometimes in your chair, unexpected things happen even when you do your due diligence. So I'm going to... I'm going to do it. I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to take you guys through what happened to this client's hair and what we were intending to do and our process and our formulas and then how we worked with these ends. Ew, they make me want to throw up. Spaghetti squash ends are disgusting. You never want to see this in your chair. This is a chemical reaction. This is not over-processed bleach. This is something else. And we had to do so much to try to, to salvage her hair and work with it. And this is really, really, this is emergency mode for us. So I'm gonna take you through what we did last night. So this is our consultation right here. We kind of grabbed a test strand to kind of hold it out horizontally so we could really see where things were. She has a few inches of her virgin root and then there was a bit of discoloration here and we asked her like, is that your box dye? And she said like she did box dye at the end of summer and that she saw a stylist for keratin smoothing and that the stylist told her that her hair might lift a little bit in keratin smoothing. Uh, spoiler alert, I don't think that was keratin smoothing and I don't know what it was. <laughs> so even though we did a test strand and it turned out fine, um, in the test strand the last inch of the hair was a little frazzly so we told her that we do a little trim and use K18. Here's us putting K18 into her hair and um, I just don't know what to say. The hair did not do what we thought it was going to do. Here was the original plan is to use 20 volume and cool additive in the sections that we do at the back and then we were going to add 40 into the 20 to kind of make it a 25 and then make it a 30 as we move towards the front of the hair. So this is us sectioning the hair into four sections. My client has beautiful, thick, long, full, voluptuous hair and it has that texture to it that lets us think, okay, this is keratin smoothing, not straightening. <laughs> So the plan was to do a platinum card and get her to a milk tea blonde or a light cool brown. That was the original intention. And um, I'll show you where we ended up getting to. Obviously, I'm going to include the results in this, but this is how we started the hair. We started sectioning it. We had the same bowls mixed and we decided to take the back at the same time. So this is why today's service really dumbfounded us because it was the exact same procedure happening on either side and one side super fried. <laughs> so it was my side and I I'm going to show you what happened. Something I want to note here is my client did not lie about her consultation. I'm not about client shaming here. My client didn't lie to me knowing she had something like a relaxer in her hair. She got it confused because of course the titles of these two services are very confusing. One's called keratin straightening, one is called keratin smoothing. And unless you know what's in there and you've done it personally, it's hard to know as a client which one is actually a relaxer and which one is a smoother. And she told us when she was in the sink, oh yeah, I got keratin smoothing done so that my hair is straight when I come out of the shower. That is a relaxer, it is not a smoother. <laughs> so this is the point when I felt like my foils were getting too hot. So I go over to Harvier's side and I touch them and they felt warm. They felt totally normally warm. And this was dumbfounding me. I was quite concerned. So I, I opened up a foil that I put in pretty recently, but two to three foils before. And I opened up one of hers from eight or nine foils before and they were the same color they had lifted to the same level and mine were expanding and coming out the sides of my foils now we didn't fold in the sides of our foils we didn't we didn't do a lot to to like trap the bleach and the hair in that foil we allowed it to stay kind of open fold so that the heat could escape but mine were expanding out the side of the foils and hers were not. Hers were doing totally fine. 
So I was thinking, okay, mine's just gonna process kind of fast and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put in the rest of the foils and then I'm going to scrape out the bleach on my side and Harvier's will catch up any moment now. I was just thinking that, okay, this is a little bit of the box dye getting a little bit hot, but mine was getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So every couple of foils I was like checking and, and touching and I was like, this is getting to be very concerning. So um, it was only my side that got this hot. It was so, so confusing. So my theory is that when she got her permanent straightening service done, which we were told it was a smoothing service done that was temporary, but this is a permanent straightening from, from what I'm seeing. When she got that done, her stylus started on the corner that I started at, and it was probably left on there for a lot longer than it should have been because this corner was the only corner that was this heavily compromised. So there's two decisions you can make when this kind of situation happens to you. Either you stop the service, you wash out her hair and you color back down the back, or you can keep going. And so what we decided to do was adapt and keep going. So I put a back bib on her hair, not her hair, her back, and I pulled out that back corner. I squeegeed off with my fingers as much lightener as I could into the garbage, and I just put regular 20 volume back onto the hair in areas that it was still feeling okay so it could keep lifting and essentially remove the insulation from the equation here because I was like, okay, the insulation's just making it hotter than it should be, which normally doesn't happen, but I'm just trying to figure out what to do here at this point as a hairdresser because at this point I still didn't know that she had keratin straightening. I thought this was the box dye reacting and sometimes it gets a little hot for a couple minutes and then you know you open up the foils and it releases a little heat and it goes back to normal or you take out the foils and things are okay but we did tell our client hey you're gonna need a bit of a cut because some of these ends are not happy right now they are not doing very great and she's like that's fine that's totally okay I understand. So at this point our thoughts were to keep going and put on the front, make sure that it catches up to a point where it's still okay and feeling healthy, but to rinse out the front a little sooner and work with a cut. Little did we know exactly how much damage had happened to the cortex of the hair so high up. So we were in the bowl and we were having a discussion with our client about what had happened and what our options were and originally we had wanted to do the platinum card and then go back in and do the roots but because of this happening it just freaked us out so much and we're like maybe we should just do a fill and a toner and then we do a root melt with toners because these ends are freaking me out so much that I just don't want to add any more bleach to this scenario I really don't want to do that so our client said yes we could do that and basically what we did was we applied a toner to this and it was 7-42 and 846, which is a mix of beige, chocolate, and cool tones to kind of fill the hair back in and balance it out. We also applied every single healing mask that we had in the salon to this hair multiple times over. Then we got to the cutting after we got out of the sink and this is what the nasty ends look like when they're cut off. It's just melted spaghetti noodles. It's so gross. This is what that initial toner looked like when we put it on the hair and we're just cutting everything out. And then what we did afterwards was put on a root melt and then a really ashy color onto any of those areas that needed it up at the roots. And then we put on another toner throughout everything else. Look at what happened here. There was like the bleach water melting out of the foils here when, and then that's what the, the little bleach spatters on the mat were. Those are the ends of her hair. It's gooey, it's compromised. This doesn't feel like regular bleach overprocessing. This feels different. And the way I can describe it is like spaghetti squash and, and gummy overcooked noodles. So the root tap is 716 and 5-4, and then we put a 4-13 onto that as well. And then for the rest of the hair, we put in a 7-56 and nougat and a little tiny bit of 5-4 to kind of even everything out because these ends were still crazy orange. The top had lifted beautifully, but it was like too light and it was taking onto ash tones. So we really pulled 
everything we could out of the book to do treatments and toners and try to fill in her hair. Like, look at the toner bottles that we used on her. This was just for her. <laughs> And uh, overall, we were able to blend her root as much as possible. You're still going to see that the front sides are a different color than the back because the back just wouldn't take that. You can see a clear line down the center of this area where the front is healthier than the back was. We blow dried her hair. We gave her a good cut. We put in like 50 treatments. Again, I can't preface about how many treatments we put into her hair to try to revitalize it. Some people's hair feels worse when it's wet and it feels a little better when it's dry. She is one of those people. But, you know, she took home some products to take care of her hair, and um, we told her if she wanted to come back and cut more off, we'd be happy to do that, but we decided to leave her hair as long as we possibly could because she wasn't ready to lose all that length. We gave her a blow dry. Her hair looks really good at the front. It's a little bit more of a warmer brown. She was happy with the color. She was actually really happy with the color. And um, even though I see problems and inconsistencies in the color, this is something that's gonna just take a little bit more work. In a couple months, she'll come back. We'll refresh her toner, do more treatments. She's gonna do treatments at home and hopefully not use high heat on her hair. That was another thing that we told her not to do, even though she said she wanted to do it. Um, but essentially the care comes up to her at home and then making sure that she books appointments just to get toner refreshes and treatments after this because there's there's not much else that we can do other than to leave the hair alone. <laughs> if this ever happens to you, you know, don't beat yourself up. It turns out she had keratin straightening in her hair done from a home salon. We don't know what brand it was, we don't know what happened, but she had confused that earlier with a keratin smoothing treatment, which is, if you know what that is, it's a temporary smoothing treatment that sits on the cuticle and does not go into the cortex of the hair. So this was a really big lesson for us to learn. Even dry, some of these ends look a little gross. You can see my corner right here had more damage than the rest of it. And, and that's why I think that she started in my corner when she did the keratin straightening. And um, overall, we're disappointed with the fact that this didn't turn out the way we had hoped to, but we were able to salvage the hair for the most part. She had a few more inches cut off than she had initially planned, but this client was such a sweetheart and she was actually really happy with the color, really happy with the cut. She was feeling good. That toner blended in the roots really nicely because we had that emergency of not being able to do the root service. We just had to root melt it. And this is what it looks like curled. Well, I mean, we're curling it. You'll see the curled results in a moment. But let me know if you guys have any hair nightmares and let me know what you thought of this service and how I handled it because I'm I'm still reeling over this the next day. This is, this is her final result. It's a little uneven, it's a little crazy, but it's the best we could do. The only thing left I can say is thank you so much to my community on my YouTube channel who have been so supportive and caring and loving to me as I kind of make this decision to make this video. I really, really appreciate you guys. And, um, you know, kindness means everything. So even if you disagree with something that I've done here, please do your best to educate me in the comments about what you would have done differently. Um, it was a big learning experience for me and my stylist today. And the thing that I can take from this, number one, is I told my stylist what I do whenever someone mentions keratin in my chair is unless they've had it done at my salon, so I know the history of the hair, unless they've had it done at my salon, I don't do a lightening service. I will only do cuts and treatments and darkening services with color. And she said, yep, that sounds great. We're gonna do that in the future. <laughs> so that's probably the best advice I can give to anybody who has something like this sit in their chair.